Now let's read on. Before we do that, I think that all of us, all of you here, maybe somebody here specifically, there's some place you need to go, and I don't mean go to Africa. I think there might be a person you need to go to. There may be a house you need to go to. There may be a relative, a loved one, a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle that you need to go to. A friend that you need to go. And you need to go. Let's continue reading. Because here's the third thing that happens when you have a, an encounter with God. The third thing is that God speaks the future into your life. God speaks the future into your life. He speaks that word of future into your life. And you see, God calleth those things which be not as though they were. Romans 4, 17. The third thing that happens when we have an encounter with God is that God speaks the future into our lives. And He calleth those things which be not as though they were. So let's read on. Arise therefore and go over this Jordan. Thou and all of this people in the land which I do give to thee even to the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall your coast, shall be your coast. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Say amen. amen. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Lord speaks into our lives the word of future. And that's what he's doing to Joshua. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land. Which I swear unto thy fathers to give to thee. Verse 7, he says it again. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Because there's going to come time, Joshua, where you're going to fail in battle. And you're going to wonder why. And somebody had failed me. And there's going to need to be a cleansing. There's going to be time of confusion. There's going to be time of suffering. But Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Can you say amen? amen. That thou mayest observe what? That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which my, Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That they may prosper. He's speaking. God now is speaking the word of the future into the life of Joshua. Folks, I've shared this with you before. I, I encourage you. To speak the promises of God into your life. Listen, there's a big difference between knowing what the Bible says and speaking it alive into your life. The devil, he knows what the Bible says, but no truth lives in him. Why does no truth live in him? Because he cannot speak the word of God into his life. But he knows what the word of God says. Therefore, it's not enough as Christian people just to know what the Bible says, but on a daily basis, we need to speak the word into our lives. My kidneys are right on the precipice. My kidneys are right on the bubble, 20%. If I drop down to 19, 18, 17, 16% for three or four months in a row, I become a candidate for a transplant. And I'm really sick. Folks, every single day I speak Psalms chapter 91 into my life, Amen. into my body. There shall no evil beset thee, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. And I say, God, I've got plagues in my body. And I speak your word as a healing into my body, into this 10-inch ureter and into the, the disease of my kidneys. I speak it. I speak healing into me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
The big difference between knowing what the Bible says and speaking it into a person's life. Hallelujah. Speaking it into your life. And that's the third thing that takes place when we have an encounter with God. God speaks the future into our lives. Hallelujah. Call it those things which be not as though they were. Hallelujah. The fourth thing that happens when a person has an encounter with God is God gives them a promise. Amen. He gives you a promise. I'll tell you the promise I'm hanging on to right now next to Psalms chapter 91 is what he just told Joshua, I'll never fail thee nor forsake thee. <laughs> And if you know that to be true, say amen. amen. I'll never leave thee. I'll never fail thee. I'll never forsake thee. Now there may be times when the Lord steps back. Real quick, if you give me just a moment to share this story with you. One of the great reflections when I think of this verse, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never fail you. I think of the Andy, Andy Taylor show. With Opie, Barney, just real quick, if you remember that episode, Opie was going to school every day and he was being bullied. And he'd go around the corner or heading towards school and the bully would come out from behind a tree and he'd stick out his hand and Opie, he command, demanded from Opie his five cents for milk. And so every day, so Opie began asking his dad, Dad, can I have, you know, five cents for milk? Well, okay, but I thought I gave you five cents, you know, whatever. And he said, well, I just, you know, I lost it. I, I, I need none five cents. So then he'd get five cents from his dad, and then he'd go to Barney or somebody else and ask him if, they could, if he could have five cents. And so after that had gone on for a while, it got back to Andy that Opie had asked him for five cents all the time. You know, we gave you five cents. Why does he want another five cents? So Barney, you know how Barney was, right? So Barney's going to start tracking him. He's hide behind trees. Hide behind him. You know, watch Opie. And Andy said, now don't you let on. Okay, Opie's got to learn. You know, don't. And so he's trying to, well, he found out one day. And he saw the bully come around. And the bully handed out his hand. And Opie shook his head no. And the bully put the fist to his nose like that. And so Opie reached in and gave him his five cents. Barney goes back and tells Andy. Andy's just sick. His, little, his son is being bullied. Opie's going to have to learn how to stand up for himself. So he takes Opie fishing. It's a precious moment, right? So he begins to tell Opie this story about how that one day he was bullied by this guy. And so while he's telling the story, Opie's asking him questions. He said, and finally Andy said, you know what? And then he punched me right dead in the nose. And Opie, did it hurt, Dad? Did it hurt? Did it hurt? He goes, didn't. He said, I didn't feel a thing. Didn't feel a thing. And he said, you know what happened then, Opie? What, Dad? What? He said, I laid into him like a windmill in you know, a storm, whatever. Really? Yeah, I did. Okay, now let's go. We got our fish. Let's go. Well, the next day, here it happens. So Andy knows, and they're looking through the window, and him and Barney, they're just all tense, right? Knowing that his little boy is going to get in a fight. And so sure enough, after a little bit of time, here comes Opie through the door. Bam! Opens the door, slams the door. Of course, he's got dirt on his face, and you know, he's and he smiles with a great big smile. He goes, Dad, you were right. I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel a thing. And he went up and grabbed him and hugged him and kissed him. And then he said, what happened? And he said, Dad, just like you, I laid a hand to him like a windmill. And then and, and they're loving and kissing and everything. And I think of that. Every time I think of the scripture, I shall not leave you nor forsake you. But there's going to be times when you've got to fight. There's going to be times when I need to see that you've grown and you've matured and now take it on. And folks, I gotta tell you something. I don't have time to fight things in the past. The only thing I have time for in my life right now, if it don't lie in front of me, it, it, there's no place in my life for it to fit. And you need to speak to yourself, Moses is dead. And that little boy, Opie, when he took that punch in the nose and then he laid into that boy, his fear died. No. And he knew 
he could fight. Somebody say amen. amen. The fourth thing that happens now, God gives a promise. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The fourth thing that takes place is that God always gives a promise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's recap real quick before I get to point five. Number one, Moses is dead. I believe there's some of us here this morning with something in your life you need to die to. Or you need to speak death to it and move on. Move on. For crying out loud, move on. Number two, command to go. Maybe there's somewhere you need to go. A friend, neighbor, brother, a sister. The other day in preparation for this message, I made a phone call to someone and I called them on purpose because I have to reach out to them, a member in our family. And I have to continually reach out to them so that I harbor no bitterness in my heart against them. So I on purpose call them. How you doing, man? They just want to call, check on you, see how you doing. I have to do that so there's no bitterness in my heart. I have to go periodically and make sure, Lord, forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, God speaks his word, the future, into our lives. Speak, take the word of God, a promise of God, and speak it into your life. Speak it, let it dwell there. Meditate upon it, hallelujah. Number four, God will always give a promise when there's an encounter with him. He will always give a promise. Take that promise. We stand on the promises. We sing it, don't we? Standing on the promises of Christ, my Lord. Okay, here we go. Then number five. Lastly, verse 10. The fifth thing that happens when you have an encounter with God. God gives you something to say. God gives you something to say. Verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, say, God will give you something to say. Moses tried to get out of it, but God, I don't know what to say. I'm just a dumb, I'm dumb, I'm just dumb, I didn't go to school. I'll tell you what to say. Yeah, but that's not enough, you don't understand, God, I'm dumb. Okay, I only got to the sixth grade, I'm dumb. Okay, for crying out loud. I'll give you Aaron. He'll help tell you what to say. But let me say this to you, Moses. You're going to have something to say. Now, maybe I'll give you a helper, but when it comes time, you're going to say something. And you're going to go. Yes. Your past is dead. Now, move on. Because yes, you, know. you got somewhere to go. you got something to say. I've given you a promise. I've spoken into your life. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now get going, arise, put on the mantle of anointing, for I'm sending you to my people Israel. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. God will give you something to say. And the Lord called me to preach the gospel when I was 15 and I took my dad for a ride. I said, I, I don't know, Dad. I don't understand him. I don't know, I don't know but I, I know this, that 
that, that I'm compelled to go. I'm compelled to go. And there's a promise. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to say, but God has told me to preach the gospel. And I've lived it for the first 15 years of my life. And now I'll begin to preach it for the rest of my life. Amen. And that means to you people in Lockway, Idaho. Hallelujah. Every head bow and every head close. Honey, if you'd come, please.